So uh, these are the few Ripple commercial use cases what Ripple has published on its website. So Ripple website is like actually in depth and it has actually a lot of content and a lot of things to go through. So I always suggest if you want to understand Ripple better, go through the documents they have to understand and to, you know, uh, know more about Ripple and how it works and its commercial use cases. They provide e-invoicing feature for B2B banks and international supply chain payments, global currency accounts, real-time cash pulling, international bill pay, real-time remittances and international peer-to-peer -peer payments. So these are the possible commercial use cases, possible using Ripple's platform and suite of uh, uh, products. And uh, Here's how Ripple has a case study on how using the Ripple platform has basically fueled from Canada to the rest of the world. So it's basically a use case about a platform or a, uh, or a remittance company called Remitter, which has used Ripple's platform for kind of remittance services. And, and basically Remitter is available for about 150 countries and through RippleNet it opened three new markets just within two weeks. So the goal was to basically speed up uh, the payment services and and basically you know easier transfers uh, for your payments in Canada so this is one of the interesting case studies and the rest they also have is like on Instagram Instagram is one of the Singapore based payment company and and uh, and how they have also used Ripple to basically scale their payment solutions and and they have just it took just then eight weeks to you know leveraging the Ripple and solutions and the and basically the customers have experienced about ninety eight percent savings on domestic transfer rates. Wow! So even Ripple not only is focusing on international transfers but also on the domestic transfers, which is like really really amazing. So, so the results has been like faster, more reliable payments worldwide and also domestically. And the other case studies of Santander Bank. So Santander is the UK based uh, internet bank. It's one of the most popular banks, internet banks, online banks in the UK. And with the UK regulation, like purely to uh, moving towards API based services and have a more banking, uh, open banking ecosystem. The UK is I think one of the best markets to be in right now for which is actually really adopting emerging technologies like really really fast so they have used ripple for real time and cross border payments and they have improved speeds and you know uh, and the faster settlement time it is like for the first time a uk bank has sent payments of this type by ripple and launched its commercial service so this is an interesting case study and uh, then you also have, uh, you know, how the Ripple helps in liquidity and infrastructure provisioning, how it works in detail, how is the flow of funds, its funding, funding mechanism and the technology used. So first it's like you have originating banks liquidity and uh, the originating banks basically use ILP ledger, messenger, forex sticker and validator and the beneficiary bank. So basically the use cases like the originity bank is in the UK and the beneficiary bank in the rest of the Europe. And the money is basically being converted or sent from GBP, Great British Pounds to Euros. And how the entire process works is like explained here in this uh, document. So as I told you that every bank maintains the Nostro and the Vostro accounts in the respective banks for sending and receiving cross-border payments. The beneficiary, so uh, bank, so basically the account has been set up and how uh, and it has explained how it works in detail from the originating bank's treasury account to the receiving account. So, so basically they have explained uh, this in detail and uh, it also it, how it's also supposed the credit line because some banks also do have the credit line for kind of a business and how Ripple also enables and fits into the credit lines. So they have explained that the account sequence for the flow of funds is as follows after the originating bank initiates payment, the funds are transferred from the originator's account to the originator's bank treasury. So each bank credit position is then updated on both banks ILP ledger. So ILP ledger, as I mentioned to you, is an interledger protocol. So both the banks are basically sharing the same accounts and the same books on real time with their respective debits and credits based on the exact transaction amount. The funds are then transferred from the beneficiary bank's account to treasury bank account to the beneficiary account. Treasury account is kind of a Nostra and a Nostra account. And for the funding mechanism, both 
transacting being banks establish a credit relationship based on either daily or credit settlement so banks can define the credit limits uh, into the ilp ledger and regarding the technology required each transacting bank runs all components ilp ledger messenger forex sticker and validator so so if a payment so it, it's, it's a use case where how the ripple works if uh, the bank is an all ripple uh, unable beneficiary the process is a little longer but it's still you know work with her account with, with the bank is non ripple beneficiary right which is actually really interesting because for the swift to work all the banks has to be basically on the swift network but even ripple work uh, if even if one of the banks or the beneficiary bank is not on the ripple's network but in that case the communication or the ledger is just uh, unidirectional rather than having bidirectional so this is one of the key differences and they have explained here that how it works and what does the beneficiary banks you know explains so and also you also have a mediator which is kind of payment provider in euro so they have explained how it works that one ilp ledger of the originating bank the payment provider is simultaneously updated with the credit of the transaction amount the payment provider then sends a payment directly to the beneficiary account through local rail so local rails are kind of a intermediaries which connects or with bridges uh, to different banks so for the funding mechanism the originating bank opens an account with the payment provider pre funding it in the beneficiary country's currency so uh, uh, let's say if the uh, money has to be received or uh, the beneficiary currency is in euro so the account has to be pre funded the payment provider utilizes local rails to pay out to the beneficiary bank regarding this technology required as the liquidity provider the originating bank requires ilp ledger messenger forex stick and validator the payment provider requires only ilp ledger and messenger so messenger is kind of to make sure or to communicate oh, anything related to the ledger and the validation point if something error occurs or if there, so the messenger would act would basically have couple of functionalities one would be basically to you know send a green signal if the transaction successfully processed or to send red flags or to you know validate the consensus so and to you know basically come and make sure that the communication is efficient and the real time and the same communication message is basically being sent to both the parties and how it is being used for service bureau and payment provider so service bureau is uh, again kind of intermediary uh, when the payment is being originated so basically if the payment is cross border and is from you know one currency to another and the currency you have a lot of lot of middlemen rail service bureaus which kind of you know come into picture and also how it would work in a third party liquidity provider so a lot of also times the banks also work with third party liquidity provider might be some forex platform or you know things like that to make sure that they had they can basically source real time liquidity so how ripple works in that case has also been you know clearly explained here and also in the correspondent banking model so this model is utilized when transacting banks leverage a common corresponding bank relationship so they might be one middleman or a middle bank between the two banks connecting them and both the banks are basically the one bank you know connecting both the parties so how ripple works in the correspondent bank use case also has been explained here so they have basically explained the use cases uh, for connecting the b2b of the businesses in a lot of other scenarios i think this is must go through if you want to understand the fintech and the payment space and how uh, ripple is actually being used in that so this is basically the ripple solutions overview it's it basically explains all the solutions we have exp uh, in detail uh, right from the payments infrastructure from today from ripple net its participants network members who are the participants its product x grant x rapid and x y and uh, how it actually works they have explained everything in detail and what is the cost benefit and what is basically the typical transaction fee so they have explained the entire business uh, use case and how basically it works so i suggest to kind of have a look at this document i will attach the link to all these documents in the description below so you can just have a look at that and this is kind of a ripple insight so they publish a lot of videos and you know information stuff on what going on with ripple to update the community in real time so this is also great so this is basically the developers portal for ripple if you are a developer i would also attach a link towards it where basically you can it has the guides how you can basically become a node validator you can know run nodes the server requirements and how you can install on ios ubuntu or your linux server and how it works 
So they have the entire guide and basically it also has its use cases, developer tools, portals and how you can work through that. So basically the Ripples community is more like from the XRP community or XRP ledger is more basically, you know, governed uh, by the Ripples community, Ripples developer ecosystem. So most of the active developers are basically from Ripple than having, you know, any other developers and like Bitcoin and Ethereum where you could become a contributor to their ecosystem as well. So this is kind of a little closed ecosystem because uh, you know uh, they kind of uh, they don't encourage much uh, of a community driven kind of a developer ecosystem but slowly that is changing because uh, ripple has its own mission and own purpose uh, and what they want to achieve in the payment space on and and basically their whole vision of delivering internet of value using blockchain so they have their own roadmap and they are basically driving it as per that but so far they have been basically doing a great great job and and it's basically the use cases what the banks have its benefits the opportunities and how it works and also they have you know demo videos that how you can get more clients and how you can increase your more businesses and remittance and this is one of the use cases for the <coughs> payment providers and what kind of services or opportunities Ripple opens for the payment providers. And they have some amazing case studies uh, with SPI Remit, which is one of the leading remittance services in Japan. And Ripple has partnered with SPI Remit to, for Japan and basically leverage the platform in Asia. And uh, this is their solutions for banks and payment providers and some of the use cases uh on how you can and these are their customers who are already using so i think they have more than serving more than 200 clients so uh friends this is it about uh ripple and for more uh, updated information and news you can follow snapperbus.com and if you're looking forward to develop your own blockchain solutions or you need help with your blockchain architect or consulting or want to develop your own platform you can reach out to me and you know where to reach out to me you can reach out to us at info at the red snapper future tech.com and also you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can search for Prashant Surana Jain. You can follow me on Twitter as well. Prashant Surana Jain. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. You can also reach out to me on Telegram. So you know how to reach out. Comment below if you have any questions, any queries, and I'll be more than happy to answer. And also, as I told you, that we are giving away free twenty dollars worth of Ripple. All you have to do is just comment below and share it, and just drop in your wallet address, and one lucky winner could have a chance to win uh, twenty dollars worth of free Ripple XRP tokens. So see you soon. Thank you so much, and look forward for our next show where. Uh, on the next blockchain masterclass, we are going to explore EOS, which is uh, one of the most leading blockchain protocols and platform, which is based on delegated proof of stake. And recently they have raised about and their ICO was a massive, massive success, like one of the biggest ICOs of all time. And we're going to see what's happening in EOS, what's his future is like, its use cases and, you know, a comparative analysis. So stay tuned for our next show and keep providing your feedbacks and comments if you want. to. And also, please let me know if you have any doubts or any queries and I'll be more than happy to help. So thank you so much. It was really great meeting you all uh, again and look forward to see you soon. Bye bye. Sayonara. Jai Hind and take care.